You're probably tired of hearing my views about your security program, so this time I'll tell you what the CIA thinks of it. So, if you're not aware, recently WikiLeaks released a lot of CIA documents, 8,000 pages to be precise. And peppered in those 8,000 pages, there are some views about antivirus programs, and this article sums that up. So, according to the documents, the CIA have offered mixed praise to Komodo, calling them a pain. The CEO of Komodo has taken that as a badge of honor. <laughs> And、uh, they seem to suggest that you shouldn't upgrade to Komodo six. Five was much better. But then again, at this point, it's like Komodo Internet Security version ten is the latest. So I don't know if they would still recommend that. Needless to say, this information is terribly out of date. Kaspersky Lab doesn't get a very good recommendation. They seem to have found flaws a couple of times, which let them bypass their protection. They think the same for Avira, AVG2, Fsecure as well, and they thought that Bitdefender was kind of okay. I don't know what to make of this. I wouldn't take this as security advice, but it's like one of those fun things to know. But there's very little evidence to back these claims, and you don't even know what the CIA guys were talking about.、It、could just be one vulnerability, as in the Kaspersky case. They've responded saying that they had a couple of vulnerabilities, but they've both been fixed. In Avira's case, they're saying it was just a minor vulnerability. So again, I mean, probably not a big deal. But what probably is a big deal is the Mirai botnet. If you're not aware of it, Mirai botnet is like the doomsday bringer. Last year, it took down a large portion of the internet with some of the largest DDoS attacks we've seen, and. Now it has a Windows version. So previously it was only infecting devices on Linux, like security cameras and stuff. But now it's got a Windows version, allowing it to expand even further. And I'm sure we're in for some nerve-wracking DDoS attacks this year. Not sure what they're going to target, but they have opened up more windows than ever with、uh, these new ports. Now they're targeting SSH, Telnet. MySQL. A lot of these are very common, and researchers even suspect that it might be stealing data from databases like MySQL. You know what's worse than getting infected by a massive botnet that's going to use your computer for DDoS attacks? Getting infected without actually having a file on your system. This article talks about what. People call malwareless attacks, which is again something that users who claim to be able to protect themselves just by looking at files should be aware of. So, a malwareless attack usually uses the remote desktop protocol to take control of the user's computer and install some kind of a backdoor. In this case, they were using the sticky key shortcut to launch their backdoor. So once they have access to your system, they're going to set up a、um, nice and easy little hack, which will allow them to obtain access to your computer even if you change the admin password values or try to lock it down. They can just use the sticky key shortcut, and that is going to launch the backdoor every time, meaning that it's very difficult for the user to get the attacker out of their system if they're not aware of the exact type of attack. Of course, once they do have access to your system, they can probably do a ton of other things and install more malware, use it as a botnet, do whatever they want. So this is a different kind of attack that you should be aware of, and especially if you don't plan on using remote desktop, you're not even a user. You should especially be aware of it because that's where they get you. People who are unfamiliar with a certain aspect of their computer are the most vulnerable to. That part being misused, so make sure you know your ins and outs with remote desktop. And if you see other login details there, your computer probably isn't yours that much. But this is on your PC, right? What about your phone? Isn't that safe? Well, mobile ransomware has jumped up by 50% in a year, and we're seeing a lot of these, you know, police-style Android lockers. They'll just lock up your screen and demand payment to unlock. And another really nice tactic that they've covered in this article is a lot of malware developers are now encrypting their payloads. 
So your antivirus tool cannot actually scan it when the app is being downloaded. So once the app is downloaded, it does not have any malicious code, so to speak, but the encrypted part is malicious. So after installation, it is going to decrypt the malicious part and then launch the payload, which is going to beat a lot of traditional AV programs. At this point though, most of this is spread via third party app stores and things like that. So I would strongly recommend that you just stick to the Google app store and you'll probably be good. If you've been going through the news lately, you've probably also heard of the Wiper malware, which is basically, you know, Shamoon and a new threat, which they're calling Stone Drill. I think that was discovered by Kaspersky. Now these threats have been targeting really high level organizations. So you're probably not going to be hit by this, but it's interesting how effective malware can be these days in major financial or cyber espionage operations. You've probably heard of the Sony Pictures entertainment attack, and that was caused by the previous version of this threat. Just to know there are some malware on the loose that wipes your drive and steals your info. And this is probably what your computer looks like once it's done. Ta-da. Uh, talking about malware being used for all sorts of purposes, Russia has admitted information warfare as one of their things that they do. So to be honest, this is kind of an inflationary article. It takes basically one statement by the Russian military. It says the information operation forces have been established they are expected to be far more effective than all we've used before counter propaganda purposes. It really doesn't tell you much. It's a very generic statement, could mean anything. But the only reason I have this on the list is because this is an open-ended question and I'd like to know your thoughts on it. So how do you think malware and uh, cyber warfare is going to shape out in the future. Nowadays, I mean, computers are responsible for pretty much everything. And the more widespread they are, the more effective an attack on those things can be. Imagine if we had nuclear missiles and things like that being controlled by computers. And uh, well, with IoT, that doesn't seem very far off. Thankfully, though, just in case you didn't know, right now the nuclear launch protocols require human presence and you need like two physical switches that they both need to be turned on within like 10 seconds. So it's not possible for one person to do it. So you need at least two sane people to launch a nuclear weapon, at least in the US, I think this is the protocol. But um, yeah, in, in the future, we're going to have a lot of weapons that will be probably automated, a lot of systems dependent on computers. So, well, computer security is just going to spiral into the frontier for warfare. Maybe I'm just exaggerating, though. Maybe I've been watching too much Independence Day. Huh. <laughs> so again, for those of you who don't know, in Independence Day, aliens attack and the Earth gets half destroyed, whatnot. And the aliens have really sophisticated technology, so we can't get through their shields. And eventually the way we manage to do that is by infecting them with a virus or computer virus. It's a nice movie. You should watch it. But well, that concludes the security talk for today. I've tried to keep this one short and I'll hopefully see you next week. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Check us out on the forums. Now it's forum.thepeacesecuritychannel.com. So if you've had bookmarks, please reset that. The link on the site does work. So nothing to worry about. I'll see you there. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, stay informed, stay secure.